Okay, so the, in this video, I'm going to be addressing a question that came in from a subscriber on wanting to get it some tips on how they may go about creating a custom Adobe wall for use in, I'm assuming, some sort of schematic project that they're putting together. And just to get you started, uh, I am building a class that I think if you consider taking, you're going to pick up a lot of different tips and tricks that will help you along in your Revit training and your understanding of the program. But we're going to explore how to create this particular wall style in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is start out here in my architectural template. And we're just gonna lay out here in our level one, let's put a couple walls in. And I'm just going to use a rectangle. We're gonna go up to level two constrain the top of our walls and there we go we'll just drop that in now let's take a look at this in 3d so up to our quick access toolbar and we're going to go over a couple things now the first thing that we're going to need to do in order to create a custom profile let's deal with the wall profile first and foremost so I'm going to select all four of my walls here in this 3d view and I'm gonna do an edit type first, and we're gonna create a wall. So let's duplicate this generic wall that we used here. And we're gonna name this right here. We're gonna take out that generic and name this Adobe, Adobe wall, and it'll be an eight inch wall. All right. And then let's hit, let's hit okay. So now we've changed that wall style here. So now we have our Adobe wall. First create the wall style. Now let's deal with the profile. If I click on edit profile here, and I'm gonna stay in my 3D view intentionally. And I'm just going to bring up very quickly a picture so that for those of you who aren't familiar with what an Adobe wall may look like, um, I just wanted to show you what you may have in response to the question we got. You'll see that some, some of the wall types, sometimes they'll have a little bit of a curved profile to them. So let's just get back to what we're doing here. But I just wanted to quickly show you, as well as I want to mention, if you go to freeimages.com and sign up, um, I've created an account there as well. You can get plenty of decent images um, by using the search box that actually are free to you to use. So I would recommend that. But let's get back to the wall profile. Next thing, I'm just going to go ahead and begin to modify the standard profile of the wall we have here. So you'll be able to see, I'm just able to sketch right here even in the 3D view. You'll see that Revit snaps to my 90 degree angles which is extremely helpful for this sort of exercise that we're doing here. So there we go. That This pretty much gives me what I was looking for here. Now because Adobe walls tend to take on more of a curved profile, I do want to, now that we've got these lines sketched in here, I do want to come back up here and use split element and let's split this wall here. Let's split it once here and here. Now all we've done by splitting the element, you, you'll see we'll be able to fill it, the profile of our wall properly. So now back up to this fill it arc command. And if I select, and I'm going to Fill it that piece, select here, and I'm just giving more of that curved profile to my wall at this point.
first thing I'll do here, sometimes you'll notice a bug to this. I'll just go ahead and first trim together my lines. And then if I come back and use this fillet arc, We all know from time to time you'll experience a bug <laughs> in the program. So you see right now it's actually filleting to the opposite side. So if I just use my trim first and trim these two walls together and then use the fillet arc. It ought to work a little bit better for you. Not quite sure why that occurs sometimes, but it doesn't occur all the time. That's enough here just for the purposes of my tutorial. So I'm actually going to get rid of this sketch line work up here that we don't need. So now we have more of a curve profile. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now we've modified that profile to this exterior wall here. So you can see that we now have something that looks more like the Adobe wall and profile, but we want to make a few more modifications. So we're going to actually create a material so that when I come back up here and click on my shaded view, right now you can see that we still have more of that chipboard material to our wall. And we want to give create an Adobe material for rendering the wall and for showing up in our schematic. So let's come back here to edit type. And we're going to come in here to edit structure. And our structure is going to be, if we click here, right now it's by category. But we want to just change this. And I know that by default, the material browser does not include an Adobe material. So we're going to need to create one. So I'm just going to select first on Brick Common as my masonry wall that we're going to start from. And down here, we're going to create a duplicate, say duplicate selected material. So what it did is give me brick common and you'll see a one here. If we just back this out entirely and I'll just put in Adobe, Adobe wall. But it allows us to start from the properties and I would recommend that start from the properties of a wall that is at least in somewhat of the category like I know that brick and Adobe are masonry and we're using an Adobe wall that has more of a block appearance to it. So the next thing I want to do is make sure the pattern here for the surface pattern we'll just use this to change this to more of a 8 by 8 block profile here that'll be used in your elevations and so forth. And we're going to come in here to appearance. This is our next and most important thing. And you can change the names and the descriptions of these, but I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, but explain enough for you to get the job done. So here, what I want to change, and this is still masonry type. Otherwise you'll see the other options you have here, but we're going to change the image. So we'll click edit image since an image has already been placed here. And if I just click here on the source, we'll be able to find the image that we need. And I'm going to go back out to the desktop and I just have an Adobe wall sample that we're going to use. And I'll click open here and you'll be able to get a idea of here's the Adobe material image that I was able to, to find for this tutorial. And for the sample, I'm just going to try to approximate what this is doing is controlling how many times this pattern is going to be repeated along your wall. So you want to kind of have some idea of what the sample size is. So I'm going to say, you know, this is roughly maybe a foot and a half of in each direction of a sample size. So let me just go ahead and put that in. All right. And then I'm going to hit done here. And because we already had the bump map of the brick, that's 
all going to work to our advantage and not having to set up as much by starting from a material. And we're going to check this for use, use rendered appearance. You see our image will change just a little bit. Here the color that's used in the shaded view. And so let's just click OK here. Like I said, there's many other things you can change here as far as the description. We can change this description to Adobe. And I would recommend these things, changing these things if you're going to continue to use this new material that you're creating um, or others may need to use it. You'll want to be able to change these the pieces that you need to change in here. But what we've changed is enough. Let's click apply. And I'm going to click OK one more time. So now you can see what we get in just a shaded view is we get the surface pattern that we identified of the eight by eight and we're getting the color because we checked that render appearance. So let's look at realistic. When we look at our realistic and zoom in, you'll see more of the realistic material of an Adobe wall applied to this wall. So you could just continue on with what we've done so far here and modify the wall profile around the wall and then begin to come in here and we'll click and it works just like a normal wall at this point you know we can build a custom window which i have some tutorials if you'd like to follow those just to get a better understanding and a grip on how to create or modify a window family but you'll see that we wouldn't have a frame in here so you might would create a window style without the frame uh, this is just a standard fixed window that I'm inserting just to show that this is going to operate like a traditional wall at this point. So through changing just the wall profile and the material, we're able to get what I believe is a very nice start on a schematic Adobe custom wall. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.